With the CC 2022 update to Adobe Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, there are now better ways to pinpoint your adjustments. We have a brush, a linear gradient, and a radial gradient, which are similar but more powerful than what we had before. Here you can see an example of what I quickly did, adjusting just the sky, just the building here in this photo. You have ways to actually select just the subject of a photo with the click of a button versus the background or the sky. And I'm gonna walk you through it all right now. So let's go ahead and take this photo right here. I'm going to reset it. So here you'll see, and it looks a little bit different than before, that we have, if you click this button right here, this little circle, we have a few options to automatically create masks for the subject, the sky, or as we saw, had before, brush, linear, or radial gradients. You can also directly from this, me this menu pick a specific color range or luminance range. So if I wanna just pick blues in this photo, for example, I can just do that. If I just wanna pick the darks or the highlights, I can do that with luminance range. If your camera saves the depth of field information in the photo metadata itself, which modern cameras are beginning to do, you can also select a specific depth range. So anything that's in focus within you know, three feet or anything that's out of focus, which is pretty awesome. So let me just show you the power of this. If I click select sky, it's going to detect the sky and boom, look at that. It did a pretty decent job at checking the sky. Over on the right, we now see, similar to before, all of the different customization options from exposure, tint, everything like that, sharpness, all of that is pretty similar. What's different here is this menu up here. This is like a little mask menu where you can keep track of your different masks that you have. You can easily create, hit the plus button to create a new mask, which was always tricky for me. I was always like stumbling upon how to create a new mask. And you could also select masks and add or subtract from the mask from this menu. And the cool thing, unlike before where you would create a mask and then you would have a little erase option down here where you'd have to use a brush to erase, you can now use any of the filters, a uh, sky selection, a subject selection, a brush, a linear gradient, a radial gradient or whatever to improve your mask. So I could go in here and take my brush you have all your brush settings over here. I'm gonna leave off auto mask or I'll keep that on. And then I could just brush here in the building just to make sure that my building wasn't captured. Oops, I went a little farther. I could undo that or I could do an add to the gradient. And similarly, I can take a brush. I could take any of the existing options and add. And you have all of this here, the data here, sort of like a layer panel in Photoshop where you can turn them on or off. Right now I see the overlay as before O on your keyboard will sh show this overlay or not. And then with that off, I can go in and make any of my adjustments, make it brighter, darker, whatever it is. This is very similar to what it was before. You can increase, decrease the shadows, everything right here. Change, you know, maybe we want this to look more like the sunset all the changes you want right there. If I want to create another mask, like I said, you just click the plus button. Let's choose subject. What's it gonna pick for this photo? This is going to be hit or miss depending on the photo, but it detects this building as the main subject of this photo, which is pretty impressive because that's, that's right. So maybe I felt like, oh, I need to brighten up that just a little bit. Let's just bring up the exposure so that that building stands out just a little bit. Pretty dang cool, right? So let's go to another photo and show you quickly what you can do. So this one is sort of like a standard portrait. Here's my sister's pup. So I'm gonna reset this one. And from the start, I'm just going to, with this filter menu open or mask menu, click select subject. It automatically se selects the pup. Maybe we wanna start by editing the background. So let's go in and select the mask, go down to the subject and then invert this selection. So now it's selecting the background. Maybe we wanna make this blurrier. Let's drop that sharpness even more. Like I did in the preview, I dropped the saturation for sort of like a creative edit. 
maybe we want to do edit the pup itself. So what you could have done earlier is actually duplicate this mask. And then underneath this one, I'm going to invert that one, which is now affecting both the background and the foreground. I'm gonna reset these sliders. And here, I might just boost the exposure just a little bit, especially those shadows so that the pup's face is easily seen. Boost the clarity, texture just a little bit, get all those details and go have cra go crazy with it. Do whatever you want here. And then to keep you more organized, up here you can rename them. So here we're going to say this is pup. And then we can rename this to background or BG. And then you can just stay a little bit more organized. Let's go to one more photo. Here, this one, I'm gonna say this is a family portrait from a little while ago. Let's go ahead and select the subjects. Dang, pretty dang awesome. It does a really good job at selecting our subject. Not as perfect as doing less selection like in Photoshop, but we're moving in that direction. And I would be surprised if we don't start to see some of these options and features that are in Photoshop for managing selections and the edge of selections and things like that. Right now we have to sort of go in with our brushes and subtract, but in the future, I'm guessing we're gonna get some edge selection, things like that, that will improve the uh, these selections. So this photo I think is actually already pretty much edited, but I just wanted to show you, you can do some pretty cool stuff with this new mask feature. Let's make ourselves black and white, kind of creative. For me, the best part about these new features is the select sky and the select subject feature. Wow, so this one, the subject it selected was this airplane streak in the sky, so that's interesting. So this isn't gonna work. I mean, it's gonna work better if you have a person or a pet or a single focused uh, subject in your frame. What I meant to do was select the sky, which is pretty dang awesome. And like I was mentioning with the selection features we might see in the future from Photoshop, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some features for sky replacement, things like that here shortly, right within Lightroom. You can do all of your adjustments like hue now, saturation, you get add color to it. So say we wanna add a little bit more warmth to the sky this way, we can do that. We wanna blend it in a little bit. We can click add, we're gonna do brush, and then we're gonna decrease the flow and density. And we're just gonna blend it in over the mountains and the clouds in the distance. This is from Catalina. So that blends it in a little bit better. If your sky is, has sort of a harsh edge, it might look a little unnatural. The other cool thing just to note too is you have these little icons on your image now where you can easily see what kind of mask filter you've applied and easily find and see them. So say I want to now edit everything else, what I can do is just duplicate this mask and then with this mask two, which is going to be the bottom half, I'm going to delete the brush and then here what we're going to do is for the sky, we're gonna reset all these filters. And then invert it. So we can click this little button to invert. And now we're going to boost the exposure, do anything we want to the part of the image down here that we want to edit. So I just playing around, but pretty cool. So this guy doesn't look that natural here, but you can see the before and after quick, quick little edit that you can do, which you could have done before, but it's a lot easier now with the current mask features. All right. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise check out my other Adobe CC 2022 update videos on the YouTube channel. Cheers.